Kagan is very excited that he gets to use power tools and Ben gave him all kinds of options to use as a wire brush wheel. Hey guys, all right, so I don't know much about what's about to happen. Uh, he's explained it to me. It's not something I've ever really been around, dealt with, had an interest in. It sounds interesting, I'll give him that, but I'll let him explain it, and uh, I'll just tell you, before Kagan throws one of his jokes out, he does get to use a Sawzall, so he's pretty excited that he gets to cut something. <laughs> I'm gonna make him wait as long as I can, though. So, this is the International, and she is parked in the garage because... So, the overall goal is to swap axle, swap drivetrain, lower this truck, get newer rims and tires, build a flatbed on it, make it kind of like a shop truck, in theory, something usable, but yet we can drive around, and it obviously does not look like a new truck. So, lower the truck. So the first thing is, is obviously when you lower something, the axle's got to come closer to the frame. I want to lower the front end like eight, nine inches. We're going to do that with uh, A-arm suspension is my plan. So we don't have to worry about the axle slung under the frame anymore. Um, but in order to do eight, nine inches back here, I do not have eight or nine inches between the axle and the frame. I only have about seven. And that is right up against the frame with no room for error. What I'd like to do is, plus the back end sits four inches higher in the front right now anyways. So what I'd like to do is, is cut the frame right here, put the top section up here, weld it to the bottom of the, or the top of the bottom section, fish plate, bracing, we're going to Z the frame. Now, I would like to act like I know exactly what I'm doing just because I've read a few things. I don't. I've never done this before. He knows more than me. I'll just leave it at that. Because I know nothing. Yeah, I'm, so what I done was, is I took me a piece of cardboard, made a few marks on the frame where I think I want to cut it at, trying to worry about drive shaft, pinion angle, all that good stuff. And um, something about like that will be the fish plate. So to give you an idea, the bottom of this frame will be here, and the top of this frame will be here. So it will actually stagger and then the next move obviously will be trying to do something with the front end but today we're going to cut this i'm going to make fish plates out of this material here which is 3 16 the same thickness of the frame i've got some flat bar here that i'm going to make uh, bracing for and we're going to box this section of the frame in and ideally this will be the strongest point of the whole frame when i'm done so that's what we're up to today and Kagan gets used power tools. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's see what you guys got. Uh, I've been work a couple hours in here. Uh, we're going to do a quick update on what's going on. I personally haven't done a whole lot because I'm over there doing my GL1000 thing. There's not enough room for all three of us on this particular project. So, uh, what you see him doing now, he's spreading sawdust on the floor for the PB blaster. Well, brake fluid. All that brake fluid? Yeah. Yeah, brake fluid. Now, I know you sprayed some PB blaster to crack them brake lines. And there's a section of brake line. So, got some prep work done. Kagan has uh, cleaned off one section of frame here, as you can see. And that's where the cut's going to be made. You can see the notches right there. There's some on the other side also. And he's going to clean up the other side of the frame. And, and now that we've got brake fluid all over. Yeah, nice. It'll make it easier. 
So what Ben's been working on here is Ben's created these Z plates and I'll just let him do some talking about that. So I've got one there, two here, this one here I've got to clean up a little bit. This would be the perfect time to have a plasma cutter. We don't have one of those. Be yeah. nice. We just use a good old death wheel on a grinder, cut them, get what we want, take and clean the edges up to a little smooth and uh, it'll be good enough for us. This, this is not a perfect fabrication garage you're not going to learn exactly how to do something the right way here but it's going to get done yep so but yep clean this up a little bit on this edge right here you can see where it's nasty from where we cut the death wheel these right here look a lot nicer and uh can't get clean in the frame that way i've got something decent to weld to and we clean these up a little bit because these had some surface rust on them so we go stage everything to uh put the frame back together I've got some good clean metal and we won't have to worry about trying to clean it after we cut it we can just have it ready to go all right so moving forward uh Kagan's going to finish cleaning that up you're going to do your thing we're going to stage the jacks and jack stands in order to make our cut yep and so what's going to happen is when we cut this and you'll see this is we're probably going to lift this one up some we're going to lower or no sorry lift this one up some lower this one down some to where we can get these aligned I'm going to get me a couple pieces of steel in here that I can clamp to this piece to set this piece on and then go ahead and weld the bottom portion of plate together on that and uh, then I'll start fish plating everything with everything stabilizing it in place and uh, once I get the outside plates on and some bracing I can probably get rid of all the jacks and everything and do my inside plates but let's keep working yep yep so, Kagan gets to use his power tools now, huh? Safety first. <laughs> first it's like fourth or fifth on the list, I think. to hold up the back side of the truck and this is a great engine hoist we have here it's pretty stout can actually pick up a lot of weight dad says he thinks it's more than capable of well matter of fact says right here it's got 2,000 pound capacity right here on the tag so it's a big the only problem is as you can see i'm loosening up the valve and it don't drop on its own this thing dad put dual packings in this years ago i believe and it stays pretty sealed up the downside is is it needs help coming down. <laughs> Ride that thing. I need more out. Not coming down fast enough for you, huh? No. <laughs> He's like, I can't hold on now. I can't hold I'm fat. <laughs> fat and I got little arms. There it goes. There we go. All right, so we're gonna put this to hold the front of the truck up. Yes, and we're gonna put a jack underneath of it for safety, but this should do most of it. And we're gonna jack the back side of the frame with another one we have. We're gonna clean up our mess we've made here first that we've got kind of a clean work area. And we're about there, huh? Almost time to cut. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, as you can see, we have got jack stands and jacks and engine hoists and they got all kinds of stuff going on right here and we'll get back to that un momento i want to walk over here for a second because uh while they're doing that i've been working on uh, this gl1000 motor and uh, i'm taking the clutch assembly apart so i can check the clutch fibers make sure that they're in good shape or if i need to order clutches before i put this back together so that's what I was working on. And uh, they've got a nut on that clutch basket that looks like that. About every Honda's got one looks about like that, at least from this time period anyway. Yep. And in the book it says, you know, use this special tool to get your clutch, clutch basket off there. So this is something that was made, homemade, and I'll get it in the background here. Once again, not pretty. Yep. You can and actually it's about ready to break a couple tabs off. We'll have to remake it, but. There it is. It fits in there. 
That was one he made when uh, he was doing his chopper, but it was good it's enough. Little, actually, I think this one's a little smaller than what the chopper was. I remember the one on my chopper fitting better than this, but it got it off here. Yep. Without breaking or bending or damaging any part of the so the clutch basket. Not, not Honda approved, but worked. Yep. All right, back to the International. Not Honda approved, but Bender made. But Bender, Bender made. It's Bender approved. <laughs> So, safety first. <laughs> or third, me. yeah. So, we've got these chains holding up the center of the frame section here. We've got some jack stands here in case uh-oh happens. Actually, I... Oh, not quite yet. But anyways, in case uh-oh happens, it'll fall down the jack stands. I've got that jack there and this little jack right here. There shouldn't be a whole lot of weight here once I cut this because it's just this frame. But, uh... I want to raise that one up there. It wobbles for you. Well, we'll get there. I'm not worried about it. The problem is I can't get a full rotation on it. I can. Yeah, it's still long. It'll be alright. That one's going to do most of the holding anyways. This one's just to help. So, about ready to fire up the old death wheel there and cut right through here. I've got my line redrawn. I've got a line on that side over there. and Yay. Alright. Let's, uh, let's see it. I want to see this thing fall apart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, hey, ready? Let's see it. It's completely cut in two. <laughs> and that smell, that of the, the metal burning, that 52 years of brain damage coming right up. <laughs> Again. It took you the whole time I was cutting that to do that math, didn't it? No, not the whole time. <laughs> Hence the partial brain damage, I guess. Another situation where a plasma cutter or something would be nice, but... We hey, like, I'll have to straight cut. Hey, we like high RPM death wheels. Yeah. So what we yeah. got? I wanted a saw saw. Eh. Saw balls are, they're not clean. This is clean. If you saw, I gave you guys a shot of Kagan's face and the disappointment while he did not get to use power tools. Yeah, my turn. <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, time for a new death wheel and break time all right so new death wheel in place here we go there she is <laughs> Awesome. And we have a complete cut in the frame. Go ahead and jiggle that for him. It is cut in two. And there's that side completely cut in two. That's awesome. Okay, so now let's do this. I'm going to take that down a notch. Actually, take, take that one down another notch. Drop it two notches. Yeah, I mean, you drop you dropping a notch yet? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me think here. Go ahead and drop another one. I'm gonna let this down some. That thing must weigh more than you. A little bit. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to leave that there for a second, bring that side up. A 
Blue, stop. Trying to take this side. Take, take it down one more notch, on this. You ready? I think we're going to have to pick it back up and take it down one more notch, is what I think. I'm looking at the angle, and I'm going to get a piece and put to the top of that frame section there and clamp everything down. Take it down one more notch. I did. Oh, you did already? Yeah. You hit him. Overachiever. <laughs> Look how much lower the cab sits right now. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're setting a little high in the nose, but we'll take care of that later. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. I got a little garage high going right now, okay? It's the fumes. It's the fumes. <laughs> so where are we going from here? I got to get some bars. I'm going to do some clamping here to kind of give me something I can clamp to here to make sure this is all kosher and line everything back, back up. Yeah. So it's going to take a few minutes, but uh, but yeah, we'll brace everything up and get everything set up, check everything for square, and before I start tacking some stuff together, but um, grab one of my fish plates here. In theory, something like that, and this is already all centered that needs to come in, but yeah, something like that. Nice. And then I'll box everything in. So we'll have more of that when we get right back from commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we think that uh, we are out of position to start welding this thing. So this is all new level of sketchy? All new level of sketchy, he yes. says. We got two pieces of hang wire holding from the bottom of the inside to the bottom of the top side, and everything's all C-clamped and vice gripped together, and it's all leveled, best we can tell. And uh, I've measured to get my angles from the sides to make sure I'm like perfectly boxed in. We've checked from our cross members to make sure it's still straight. Everything is square as it can be. Yes, I realize that our drive shaft's running downhill to our um, slip joint on our carrier bearing. We'll work on all that after a bit. Right now, I just want to get the frame squared away. Um, but I have decided that it is close enough to start burning in. I've burnt in this already a little bit. I'm going to burn in this some and then I'm going to start putting the fish plates on. Once I burn these in we'll be able to remove this ratchet strap because it'll hold this right here in anyways. Um, we'll check the measurement from center to top and from top to bottom as we start uh, boxing stuff in to make sure the frame's not splaying out or in any. But um, once we box it really it can't. We're boxing from the inside as well. So uh, Kind of good. I'm gonna burn some stuff in, add the fish plates, box everything in. Uh, we'll start removing the ratchet straps once we get everything kind of tacked in and get rid of some of the vice grips and C clamps after we get some other stuff welded on. And piece by piece, we'll leave this thing to where it's its own again. So, without yeah. letting any of it warp from welding. So, that's the first step in dropping this thing. But we have now effectively. I don't want to say lowered the rear end nine inches because when we flatbed it, you'll never know we Z cut this frame. But if you look how much lower the back of the cab is now, we lower the front and it's going to lay this thing out a little bit more. You know, we're going to lower that front end the way it is and run it for a little while with this drivetrain as we work on finishing the back end to get the full glory of the back end. We'll swap axles, that kind of thing, and then work our way to the front of the truck. Because we can just about finish the whole rear section of the truck minus the flatbed before we ever remove the cab off the frame. And then we start working on the front. Try to keep everything rolling around here so we can move it in and out of the garage so it's just finish a piece at a time. Sounds good. And yeah. hopefully, before we go to removing the cab, you might see us out in a few places I with it. I promise you that if this thing gets welded back together tomorrow, and we can get the brake line bled on, everything working right, this is going for a drive like it is. That's <laughs> happening. I don't care if I'm looking at the sky, we're going for a drive. Well, we'll see what happens. That's 
for my best rubs to put on in a while. <laughs> it actually don't look bad at all. Ladies and gentlemen of the Bender community, what we have here is a Z-cut frame. Now, it is not quite finished yet, but we are running low on time on this Friday evening, so. It's time to go home, take a shower, get cleaned up, come back and do it again tomorrow. That's right, because that's what we do. Here is the one side, and I'll just give you a little quick walk around on what it looks like at the moment. I've got some other bracing and stuff to do, but yep. we're going to box in that area, and that'll make it the strongest section of frame. And I'm probably going to double wall box this area here, top and bottom, to really make this strong. I like a little overkill. Yeah, so that's what it looks like at the moment. That is one side. Plates are on. We've got that side tacked so it can't go anywhere. We've checked everything. It's square. The whole thing is square. We ran measure, measurements all over cross member to cross member. Uh, angles down to marks so far into the frame. It's square. Yeah, we got a few things to do to mark. And um, we'll probably uh, try and move the carrier bearing up after we get all this welded in on both sides and boxed in. And we'll drop that loosen that brake line at that end, drop it down and try and get the brake lines back together. Um, we've got the wiring actually pulled away from the frame right now, tied to the drive shaft just to keep from it getting into where we're welding and working. We'll put that stuff back up on the frame and uh, the sun shines on us tomorrow. We're driving this thing tomorrow evening down the road just the to see. sun shines on to us. It has wipers. Yeah, they don't work. But, anyways. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you uh, don't mind, hit that like button down there, the subscribe button, and maybe tune in for the finished product of this. If you feel outraged that I didn't get to use a saw saw, comment. <laughs> yeah, let us know that you want to see Kagan use a saw saw. We'll find something for him to cut up. Thanks, guys.